All right, let's get started lesson two, the first law of thermodynamics. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the principles behind the first law of thermodynamics, which is also known as the law of conservation of energy. Now, this is a fundamental and important law in nature, and you need to know it quite well in order to be successful with the topic of thermodynamics. So let's dive into exactly what is the first law of thermodynamics. By definition, it is defined as the in, that energy is neither created nor destroyed, but is only transferred from one form to another, which just simply means that the total amount of energy in the universe must be conserved. This is somewhat similar to the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter is conserved during the course of a chemical process. And now we're going to look at the fact that energy is also conserved during a chemical or physical process or change. All right. Now, we have an equation down here that relates to the first law of thermodynamics. So, in this equation, we have a triangle. The triangle that you see there just means change. So, any time you see a triangle, we're just talking about change. Right, a change in something. So in this case, we're looking at delta E, which is the change in energy of the system plus the change in energy of the surroundings. So the change in energy of the system plus the change in energy of the surroundings equals the change in energy of the universe. And what we find with this equation is that when you take the change in energy of a system and you add it to the change in energy of the surrounding environment, it will equal a value of zero, meaning that there is a conservation or energy is conserved in the universe during the course of chemical and physical processes. All right, so when two systems come into contact with each other, the amount of heat energy that comes out of one system is equal to the amount of heat energy that goes into the other system. This is pretty vital and um, it really applies to the, law, the first law of thermodynamics or the law of conservation of energy. So let's kind of take a look and diagram this. What we have is two boxes here that represent two objects that are in contact with each other. Um, in the first box, the temperature is going to be higher, so the temperature in the first box is going to be higher than the temperature in the second box, so this is going to represent our low temperature. Now what we've learned before is that when two objects are in contact with each other that are at different temperatures, there's going to be a transfer of heat energy. And heat energy is always going to transfer from the higher temperature object to the lower temperature object. So we're just going to say, basically, I'm going to write this down of heat transfer. All right? Now, by convention, we know that heat transfer, which the... Um, we're going to put delta G Q here. Remember that little uh, Q stands for heat. So the change in heat for the high temperature is going to carry a negative sign. Not because it's a negative amount of energy, but just because that heat is leaving the um, system All right, in that box. Okay. Remember that negative sign just means that there is a loss of heat energy. All right. For the low temperature, the change in heat energy is going to be positive, all right? But that's because heat is going into our system here of the lower temperature box. So the bottom line, when heat energy is transferred, the energy of the system must be decreased for the high temperature, and the energy of the system must increase for the low temperature. All right. Now, how does this relate to the first law of thermodynamics? Well, the heat loss from uh, the high temperature, which is 
we're going to say again negative delta Q must equal the change in temperature that is absorbed by the low temperature system. All right, oops, let me make a better delta here. All right, this equation only works if energy is conserved. So we're going to put first law. This relates to the first law here of thermodynamics. Again, when heat is transferred from one object, that same amount of heat must be absorbed by the second object at lower temperature in order to conserve energy and obey the first law of thermodynamics. So we can actually go back to our definition of um, the first law of thermodynamics and with our equation we can add another one. We can say the change in heat energy that's lost must equal the change in heat energy that is gained by a second system or it could even be the surroundings, all right? But that energy must be conserved, all right? So there's our box. All right, so let's use a practical example. So here we have a system set up where we have um, a combustion reaction occurring with the Bunsen burner. The Bunsen burner here um, is burning methane gas. So the reaction here, I'm going to put is CH4 plus oxygen and that's going to produce water plus carbon dioxide you know that's just a simple combustion reaction alright now during the course of this combustion reaction um, energy or heat energy is going to be lost by this system so we're going to say that this is our system um, where our chemical reaction is occurring and everything else is the surrounding environment and so we have a beaker and this beaker here is going to be full of water so what's going to happen is is that heat that is lost by the chemical reaction this combustion reaction is going to be going into the surrounding environment or into the water okay and so what we're going to say in a perfect system and we're just going to pretend that all of the heat from the reaction and so we're going to we're going to actually label this as delta q of reaction okay rxn means reaction so all the heat from the reaction and the sign must be negative because we're losing heat energy and we're going to pretend all of that is going to go into the water None of it is going to escape into the surrounding environment or into the metal or anywhere else. We're going to say it just purely goes into the water. If that's the case, then the amount of heat that the water gains, so that would be the change in Q of the water, is got to be positive. All right? Because all of the heat energy from the reaction is going into the water making it a positive uh, absorption of heat energy or a positive change in heat energy. So if we are to think about the first law of thermodynamics and we're saying that again that all the heat is going directly into the water and none of it is escaping anywhere else or going anywhere else then we could simply state in a very important equation and that is the Q or let's say the um, change in Q of the reaction which is negative meaning that it, the heat's going out of the system is equal to the change in heat that's absorbed by the water and that's got to be positive and we can say this equation Oops, I lost it. Let me, let me rewrite that equation so that you have it here. Okay, so again, the change in heat of the reaction, which is negative, 
is equal to the change in heat of the water that's being absorbed. And we can say that they're equal to each other because we're going to make an assumption. We're assuming that, again, all the heat from the reaction is going directly into the water and nowhere else. And so, therefore, we can apply the first law of thermodynamics. All right? So, there's just kind of a, an example. Now, we're going to use this uh, problem uh, later on when we get into what is called calorimetry. And so, be familiar with this um, first law of thermodynamics equation with the heat of the reaction is equal to the heat that's going into the water. All right. So that is all that I want to discuss with the first law of thermodynamics. Just simply remember that the first law of thermodynamics just describes that energy in the universe is constant. That all changes in energy is conserved. And all it is is we move energy from one object to another or from an object to the surrounding environment or from the surrounding environment into the object. But overall, that heat energy or change in energy is conserved or constant. Okay? So that is it for this lecture video.